So today we got 99 Ken Griffey Jr. Finally, he is the new Legend and Flashback Collection Award. There are a lot of cards to collect. If you're someone who's especially behind on this, it could seem a little overwhelming, which is very fair. But what we are gonna do today, we're gonna break down each collection how difficult or easy it is to obtain, how you could earn most of the cards, and give my strategy of what I kinda did to get all of this done beforehand, cause I got it done literally within minutes of it dropping. There are a lot of things, a lot of cards, a lot of collections to talk about, so let's get right into it. So this is your collection screen. You go into the Griffey Jr. section, you see you need 16 vouchers. Jimmy Fox is the halfway point of it, so this is also worth getting by the way. And you may see these vouchers. If you're someone who's significantly behind, it could be a little overwhelming. It could be a little stressful thing about all the cards you need to get. It may seem daunting, but what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to simplify the process for you in case you are really close or really behind. Break down which collections are easy that I really suggest doing. Break down the ones that are maybe more difficult and recommend skipping and go through the overall process of earning this. I've been preparing for this weeks before, buying cards, earning them through BR programs, rank seasons, all of that stuff, building up the inventory. So that's why it was easy for me. But if you're someone who's a little behind, I wanna give you a good path so you can get this done as soon as possible. I know a lot of people want Ken Griffey Jr. on their God squads. So first, I implore you with all of this, do as much free to earn stuff as possible. Do things like Team Affinity Season 5. Season 4, Season 3, if you've been playing the game, especially the last three seasons of Team Affinity are going to give you a lot of progress. So if you're close to finishing them, or if you're a little bit behind, I really would recommend taking some time and doing that. It'll give you a lot of free cards to add to your inventory, a lot of free packs so you can get some more cards, and some subs so you can buy some cards. Do that whenever you can, even if you are a little bit behind. Also, remember, you can skip one collection. There is one extra voucher. There are 17 total vouchers you could use to get Griffey, and you only need 16. So keep in mind, if there is something that is impossible or difficult for you to get, you can skip that one collection, try to do the other things. And also, if for some reason you do have a duplicate card, maybe you chose a card twice on accident. I did that a couple times earlier in the year. Go to the show.com and file a support ticket and make sure you get that handled. It'll help you get these collections done, not having the duplicate cards and giving you that one or two extra free cards depending on how often it happens. So first of all, I wanna talk about Finest. 2021 Finest is a big one to do. If you're just hopping on the game now, Team Affinity 5 dropped and there's a lot of really good cards. If you just complete Team Affinity 5, get those 30 cards, then you buy these cards, which are extremely cheap right now. You're not gonna be paying that much, but you also get progress for all of the collections, which is very valuable. If you're someone who feels like they need a catch up, this should probably be the first thing you do. Not only do you get end game cards to add to your God Squad, but also you're gonna be getting cards that help with the collection and those vouchers. So definitely start off with this. And remember, you get a lot of free packs in Team Affinity 5, like Kitchen Sink, Space Packs, Field of Dreams. I'm pretty sure you get all of that stuff in there. So make sure when you get those packs, keep the cards you get unless you have all of them already and just sell the extras. You wanna save stubs and get cards for free whenever you can. First, let's talk about some of them that I think are kind of coinciding with each other. Rookie, Breakout, All-Star, and Veteran. A lot of these are in a similar place. Some of them you need more than others. Some cards may be difficult to obtain in the Veteran series, for example, because these were early game cards, but these cards would be definitely easy to get once extra inning programs drop and they likely include all the previous inning program content in the final program so if you're someone who needs some of these bronzes maybe don't worry about them until that drops but most of these the value you're going to get out of these is doing the live series collections if you haven't gotten chipper jones definitely do it really isn't that expensive now and all of the different cards you get to add to your inventory they're almost like needed at this point in the game with the total amount of cards you get that also plus the BR programs, getting those silver and gold flashback packs also give you a lot of really good cards of these series. Get them for free as well. They really aren't that hard to do. Just like spend a couple days of playing BR, focus on drafting BR players, getting the missions done. You don't even need to do the entire program. You at least need to get those cards, but getting those diamonds also will help you a ton. And I would like to link all of these together. Do these definitely. These are all really easy to obtain. They're kind of must do in my opinion. Postseason is very close to being included in this. 
but you also have to include the postseason programs that we got this year. Doing those will make this a cakewalk, I would say. But again, there it could be a little bit grindy if you haven't done any of the, the postseason programs this season. It could be a little overwhelming if you're behind, but definitely worth doing because you don't have to pay a single stub for half of the cards you get. And a lot of these cards are very easy to get through collections and are cheap to earn. But yeah, I would go the route of getting this done 100%. But with the postseason cards, we're starting to tread into other types of cards, like the monthly awards and the tops now. I link those two together. I think a lot of people have done them all year, but if you haven't, first, do your top snail moments. Do all those cards. You're going to get half of the cards through the top snail moments, about halfway done through this collection just through that. And then the other half you could earn for free in the monthly award programs. You don't have to buy a single top snail card if you haven't sold any already. If you did sell some top snails that you got for free, you're going to have to buy them back. But it really isn't too bad to do, though. It's not too hard to do that if you've been keeping up with the game all year. And obviously, while you're getting those tops now, you can do the monthly award programs and get these cards. I think these ones are kind of must-do as well. You may as well do these because you don't have to pay stubs. You can do them for free. And if you've been playing the game all year, it's especially. But it may take a little bit of time to do if you haven't done them. I guess there are some people out there who may not have done them. May have been avoiding collections all year. Then our prospects. This one, you kind of got to buy or just earn them by using the u.s conquest map the u.s conquest map could be very valuable i've heard it takes like six hours of time that could be pretty valuable to do but keep in mind it's time you know you could if you have a lot of stubs you've been saving i would just buy most of them and a lot of them like dominguez liberator riley green blade luciano grayson rodriguez rutchman you get in free to earn packs like space and kitchen sink so make sure you Pick them up in those free to earn packs. And I guess you could skip one card if for some reason there's one card you don't want. I don't know entirely why they did that, but they, they definitely went about that route of giving you one to skip. And then the 42 series. This one is, again, not too bad if you've been playing the game all year. If you did TA1, buying the cards at this point is just a cakewalk. You know, they're mostly less than 10K and just doing TA1 plus that definitely is valuable. But you're someone who got on the game late and hasn't touched Team Affinity 1. It is far more difficult to grind. You don't get much progress by playing the game. So this one may be one you consider skipping because of the time you'd have to put in the grinding Team Affinity. It may not be worth putting in the, the time to grind all of that when you could just do other things that can be earned by just buying cards or in quicker to obtain ways. Same with our All-Star game ones, but except this one you probably want to do it actually isn't that many stubs to get done. The cards you have to buy, you don't need to do too many. If you do Team Affinity 3, that is far quicker to do than TA1. You get a lot of progress just by playing with cards in that division. If you've been playing the game a good bit, you've probably gotten a bunch of packs and stuff for free. A lot of the cards are quick sell value. It just make, make sure you do the Ronald Acuna program as well to get the free card. And yeah, I really don't think this one was too bad either. But, you know, if you're someone who didn't touch this at all for some reason... It may be a little bit of a grind, but I guess you could grind multiple team affinities at once, do TA, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You get progress by doing all of them by just playing the game, basically. So I guess you could kind of include them all together. So now we're going to get into the difficult territory. This is the territory where I think it's worth 100% saving one of these to skip. Do that finest collection over one of these very likely. Because this one could cost you some stubs if you are behind. And some of these require some expensive cards. And you're going to be dishing out a lot of stubs to get this done. First of all, the most difficult to them, in my opinion, is Prime. Overall, they made it easier than it had to be. Make sure you do things like run it back and get Steve C. Shack. Make sure you collected some of the Pennant Race Awards. Some of the Inning Program Henchmen. Some of the cheap Headliners. The Daily Program Cards. A lot of these cards shouldn't be hard to obtain. But you're going to likely have to buy a few if you haven't already. And some of them are pretty expensive. Like Joe Morgan. He was 500k the other day. A lot of them are pretty expensive. So you may have to dish out a good amount of stubs. But if you've been keeping up with it. This one may not be too bad. Because you don't need that many cards past the Kershaw collection. The award series is a lot. And a lot of the top tier ones are pretty expensive. Again you may be dishing out a good amount of stubs. But there are also a lot of cheap and free to earn ones. Some of these cards are just pack cards from earlier in the year some of them are just henchmen and evo programs and run it back and 
player programs, and you shouldn't have to actually pay that many stubs to get many of them. But again, this one could cost a good amount of stubs as it adds up. 40 cards does add up to a good amount of time, and, you know, it could be pretty expensive if you're a good bit behind. But Prime is definitely easier. Sig Series is a little closer to a Word Series where it was on the easier end of things, but again, there are a lot of Sig Series to collect. There's just so many. If you've done Team Affinity Season 4, you get a good amount from their player programs. There's a lot of them where you, you can get them for free. A lot of cheap ones as well. But again, these are also some expensive ones, you know? A lot of expensive cards in here if you are behind that are usually like 100k plus. So you definitely want to try to get the free ones whenever possible. Then you have your milestones. This one definitely has the largest quantity of cards. But also there's a lot of free to earn. And the bottom here are not too hard to obtain. You could probably get this one done just by buying cards and you wouldn't have to spend too many stubs. But again, if you don't have many, if for some reason you don't have many milestone cards, you're going to be dishing out a pretty penny to get this done, I would think. Again, Team Affinity Season 4 will help you a ton with this. That is for sure. But also just like this is an accumulation of a lot of things. If you've been not keeping cards, this one could be a little bit of an issue. And second half heroes, the main reason I'm going to include them here is because there are a few expensive ones. Schmidt, Nolan Ryan, Ola Rude, Giancarlo Stanton, Albert Pujols. There's a few of them that are pretty expensive. There's also a lot that are cheap. Keep in mind, you're going to have to likely pay a few hundred K. I think this one is on the easier side of things. You should do it. But if you are behind, you do have to dish out some subs to get some cards. Keep in mind, again, likely when a new inning program drops and some of the old bosses like Mike Piazza get added, then this could make the process a little easier. And I would love if these cards were easy to obtain. At this point, I wish they weren't this expensive. And your future stars. This one could be a little difficult, but a lot of them are cheaper and easy to obtain through Team Affinity. TA2 gives you a good amount of future stars. TA four as well you get a good amount of future star cards just from the henchman packs and then you could just buy a couple you know some of them are cheap like meyer dustin may Tariq scoob we can get and run it back same with caber ruiz and gorman there's a lot of these at this point in the game there's a good shot you have a few of them already so i wouldn't think this is too hard it's probably right around the same spot as the second half heroes and that is it for the collection just to summarize Make sure you are doing things to get as many cards as possible. Make sure you're buying the cheap cards. And finally, make sure you're doing Team Affinity. If you keep up with Team Affinity, you have done most of that. From the free packs, to the stubs, to the cards you get for collections, that is the key to getting a large majority of this done. And the last bit is just buying the right players with your stubs. And that just comes down to the amount of stubs and the amount you've been playing the game. This probably isn't too bad for you to do. It just may take a little bit of catching up depending on how many of the collections you have done. And I really think if you don't have much of this done, if you really want Griffey, just make sure you're doing all the little bit of free to earn things that take your time. Don't stress yourself out. Maybe if it takes you a month or whatever to get him, just take your time. I really think everyone can get this done though. I believe in you. Let me know in the comment section. What do you think of Griffey? Do you think Griffey's worth all of this grind? Do you think this collection is easy or difficult to obtain? How far are you in the collection grind? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll be uploading more videos throughout the week going through Team Affinity Season 5. Go break now how you can complete that in the easiest manner. Doing tier lists of all the new cards in the game and just doing a bunch of different stuff because at this point in the year, man, it's there may not be that much informative stuff for me to add. So we're going to be doing a lot of crazy stuff fun stuff on the channel here so make sure you're subbed make sure you like the video to get the videos out there but you have a great rest of your day good luck on the griffey jr grind i believe in you i'll see you all again on the next video later this week deuces